Welcome to another Three Steps to Sketch. Today we're going to look at a basic unshifted cosecant graph, y equals cosecant of x over 2. So here's our template and our grid. And to start, let's go ahead and notice that our equation is in the general form for unshifted cosecant equations, and that's y equals a times the cosecant of bx. So we can see our equation follows that form. We have no shifting going on, and we know we can use this basic unshifted template um, for cosecant graphs. So let's dive into step one, where we find our companion equation and its essential information. So our companion equation will be exactly the same as our equation, but we'll just replace it with the reciprocal function sine. So our companion equation here will be y equals sine of x over 2. And if it helps you to go ahead and write that as sine of 1 half x, just pulling that 1 half to the front so you can clearly see that's the b term, um, go ahead and do that as well. All right, so let's analyze this equation. Um, we're essentially going to be graphing this equation so that then we can take the reciprocal and get the graph we actually want, which is cosecant. Um, if you aren't familiar with graphing sine equations, this should give you a pretty good idea on how to do it. Um, but you can always go check out videos on graphing unshifted sine graphs first, um, and that'll give you a really great foundation for this. All right, so a is the leading coefficient, which is an understood one. That tells us our amplitude, uh, which is distance from midline to max or min, and that's what's going to help us set some of our y coordinates for our key points in the next step. All right, b is the coefficient of x, so it's one half here. And that tells us two things. First, it tells us we should have half a cycle happening between 0 and 2 pi for both this companion equation, sine, and our final equation, cosecant. And it also helps us find the period. And we do that taking 2 pi and dividing by b. So 2 pi divided by 1 half, think about multiplying by the reciprocal fraction, that's actually 2 pi times 2. So our period is 4 pi. And remember, that's the length of one horizontal cycle. Now that we have that an analysis, we can move on to how do we label our scales. Um, so for the horizontal scale, we take our period and we divide by four. You could essentially do anything, but this will ensure that each of our companion points in the next step align nicely with horizontal tick marks. So it just makes for a nice clean graph. So again, we take our period and divide by four. So four pi divided by four will label our horizontal tick marks counting by pi. The vertical scale is usually a little bit easier. Uh, one typically works very well, and it will in this case. All right, let's take a minute and label our axes. So we'll start with the horizontal axis, count by pi. So we're almost counting just by simple counting numbers. We just are doing it with pi attached. So we have one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi, six pi, seven pi, eight pi. So I'm going to pause and label the other side of the axis with these values just negative. So here's the finished horizontal axis labeled, and then we'll count by one to label the vertical axis. So we have one, two, three, and negative one, negative two, negative three. So now we're all set up for step two. And before we go, let's do a little bit more analysis on the asymptotes of our final equation, y equals cosecant x over two. So the asymptotes equation will be a very concise way to represent all the asymptotes for our final graph. And there's a nice trick to do this. I'll post some more detailed videos about this later. Um, but for now, we simply know, take the inputs of the cosecant function. I'll do a little scratch work uh, right off to the right. So we take the inputs of the cosecant function and set them equal to zero plus pi k, where k is an integer. And we do that because we know that the asymptotes of cosecant graphs happen wherever sine has its original x-intercepts. So we're basically applying the horizontal transformation to those parent graph asymptotes. Um, again, we'll go into a lot more detail with that in a later video um, that focuses just on finding asymptotes. But for now, for all your cosecant graphs, you can find the asymptotes equation, take the inputs, of the cosecant function and set them equal to zero plus pi k, and then simply solve for x. 
So to do that here, we'd just multiply the entire equation by two. We'll write the finished equation over in the asymptotes blank in the template. So we have x equals, of course, zero times two is still zero. And then pi k times two is two pi k. Um, and again, k is an integer here, and substitute in different integers to get different asymptotes along the graph. So for example, um, if we let k equal zero, our final graph should have an asymptote at x equals zero, um, or on the y-axis. If you let k equal one, you should see that you have um, an asymptote at two pi. If k is negative one, you have one at negative two pi. And I like going ahead and finding this asymptotes equation early while we're still doing all the analysis and organization um, because this becomes a really nice way to check uh, our final graph and just make sure that that informa information matches up. All right, so now let's go into step two where we're going to plot our companion pattern. So we're basically graphing y equals sine of x over two. Remember that the basic sine pattern is x-intercept maximum, x-intercept minimum, and it starts at the origin. Okay, so lightly graph this. We're going to use this graph as the launching point to take the reciprocal in the next step. We have our x-intercept at the origin, and I'm using light blue to show a light um, mark. So then our maximum should happen at the next horizontal tick mark, so at pi, and look to a, whatever a is, will be your y-coordinate um, or your maximum value. It goes back to that amplitude that we talked about at the beginning. Okay, our x-intercept should happen at the next horizontal tick mark, and then we should have a minimum at the third horizontal tick mark, and the minimum's value for the y-coordinate will just be the opposite value of a. All right, we would close the graph out, we would repeat with another x-intercept to start a new cycle at 4 pi. And you can see that this is what the graph of y equals sine of x over 2 would look like. Now that we have that, we're ready for the main event. Step three, we recip, sketch, and repeat. And so recip is just a word that I made up, the verb form, if you will, of take the reciprocal values. Now, if you know what cosecant graphs look like, you may not even have to do this. You can probably just work from the maximums and minimums of your companion pattern. Um, but I will go through and show you a few examples of reciprocal values that help you create the cosecant curves. So first, we tried to take the reciprocal starting at the origin of that x-intercept. Well, one over zero is undefined. And so we have the vertical asymptote there. And that goes back to what we were saying about finding that equation for asymptotes, um, the original x-intercepts from our companion graph, we can't take the reciprocal or we get an undefined value, and so that's what creates a vertical asymptote. All right, so now let's work our way to the right. We're just taking y values on the graph and taking the reciprocal or flipping them. So let's do 1 half. If you flip 1 half, you of course get 2. Reciprocal of 1 is 1. Reciprocal of 1 half again, keep moving right, is 2. All right, when we run into the x-intercept at 2 pi, same thing happens as did at 0. 1 over 0 is undefined, so we know we have another vertical asymptote. And this is when k is 2. All right, keep on moving. So let's take the reciprocal. Uh, we'll do negative 1 half is negative 2. Negative 1, of course, stays negative 1. And negative 1 half is negative 2. So we can really see the foundation of these cosecant curves. Um, as you get to 4 pi, you'd have another vertical asymptote, another original x-intercept, um, but we'll leave that for another cycle. Let's go ahead and sketch now. So we're sketching in the cosecant curve. Notice how this point, this lowest point in the general area, uh, happened at what was the maximum from our companion sine graph. We call this point a local or relative minimum um, because in the general area, it is the lowest y value. As we sketch in this next cosecant curve, notice that the minimum from our companion graph turns into a local maximum. So that's that point at three pi negative one. It's a local or relative maximum, which just means its y value is the highest in the nearby area. Of course, it's not the absolute maximum, um, but it's just some nice terminology to know. All right, so now that we have one cycle of cosecant x over two, we can repeat. And we can do this for as many cycles as we need. So if you just need one, you're done. Um, but we can just keep repeating this pattern. So we have a vertical asymptote here at four pi. 
that's when you let k equal 2. We can just graph that local min right there. And then we have another vertical asymptote. That's when k is 3. So hopefully this is helping you see more how that asymptotes equation works. And then we have a curve that has a local maximum here. And another vertical asymptote at 8 pi. And that's when k is 4. So now let's move in the negative direction. Let's work backwards. So we're just sketching in these curves. Try out different values of k in the asymptotes equation to see how you can get those vertical asymptotes to generate. So k is negative 1 for the asymptote at x equals negative 2 pi. We have a curve with a local minimum. At this vertical asymptote, k is negative 2. Another local maximum. K is negative 3. Another local minimum curve. And K is negative 4. So here you have four really nice cycles of Y equals cosecant X over 2. Uh, before we finish, one quick thing to notice. Uh, look at the cycle in green, that first one that we created. And notice that we said B was 1 half, so half of a cycle should happen between 0 and 2 pi. So that's that part of the cosecant graph right there. And you can see that's not a full repetition of the pattern, it's just half. And so we're consistent with that original piece of information too. So it's just nice to go back and just uh, take a step back, look at everything you have, make sure it all works together, and you'll feel that much more confident that you have an accurate graph. And that's all there is to it. Um, I'll post some more links to worked examples of cosecant graphs and other trig graphs in the video description, so feel free to check those out, and thanks for watching.